This is project two, stage two. We're starting off by working in the layers panel, taking a look at layer one. You can see that all the stuff is in there. We've got that lock rectangle in there. We can actually go ahead and show that at this point. We're going to change the name of the first layer. And when you get the layer options, some of this stuff looks a little bit familiar. You can show it, print a layer. Okay, that's something different. You can have a non-printing layer. We didn't have that option in Illustrator. This will keep a layer from being seen as part of a PDF file. So you might put things on there like this gets used a lot with uh, printing things like for a die cut where you have a die cut layer you would like that layer not to be printed. You don't want that to show up in a print but you want the printing company to see that so you could put that on a non-printing layer and click that. Uh, the other weird thing is the suppressed text wrap when layer is hidden. So if you have text like on this particular thing, we're going to put a text box in there. If we put a text wrap so that the text will go around this guitar that's in there, if we were to hide the layer or hide that guitar and not show that particular piece, which we could do up here by, you know, just turning it off, the text will not wrap around that. The text will just revert to a straight square box. So it's like we have some controls in here that are kind of fun. We can show or hide our grid lines if we have grid lines associated with this layer. Uh, but we are going to change the name on this. We're going to call it graphics and save that layer and then we're going to end up hiding that. But right now let's just turn that on and then we're going to turn collapse it, turn the visibility off and we're going to create a new layer. This layer, layer two, we're going to go rename that right away. It's going to hold our text. And then you should probably save your file. The next section has to do with text threading. We've already threaded text in Illustrator. You should remember how to do that. We're going to create some text boxes now picking up your text tool, just go ahead and start creating text boxes and we're going to make each text box and we're going to put them in a specific size and location. The first one, once you draw that text box, we can use the properties panel to make changes to it. We need to get rid of all of this stuff though, so you do have to go back to your selection tool. So for this in my transform, again, we're always going to be working uh, for the most part with the upper left hand reference point. So it's going to be a location X and Y of a quarter of an inch. My width needs to be 10 and a half inches so that it will take up the width, full width of the, the uh, sheet within the margins. And our height is going to be uh, 0.625, which is mm, 5 eighths of an inch, I believe. So that is our first text box. We're going to create two more. I'm going to be lazy about it just because I can be, and so I'm simply going to clone that text box and then change the parameters on it because I don't feel like going back and forth. My X position is five and three quarter inches. My Y position is one and a half. The width is five inches and the height is four and a quarter. And again, I'm just going to clone that. And again, I will change the parameters on that to a position of four and a half for the X value, the Y value is 7.9. The width is going to be six and a quarter. And the height is just over a quarter of an inch at 0.35. Picking up my type tool again, I'm going to click inside that first frame and I'm going to place in a text file 
and we want the festival text make sure I have my replace selected item so that it will load into the text box rather than to my cursor I'm going to select open and let me shrink my layers remember we're going to swap over to the selection right now and pick up that out port because you see we have the same thing with the uh, red plus in there to show overset text I'm going to click that and I'm going to join that with the text threads and I actually want to thread this one as well even though there's nothing there I need that out port and connect these so you can see there's an out port this one now has the in going into it I can go up to my view and I, within the view I can show my extras so let's find in extras show text threads and you can see that's how those are going to thread now the way we have everything formatted right now we don't have enough text for it, the threading to go any farther than the text box but as we change the text uh, styles that's going to start shoving things around so I'm going back in and I'm going to hide that again I don't need to follow those I know that they're there and one of the first things we need to do is put in a text frame break now we have our title up here which is the summer indie rock festival with my type tool which I don't happen to have but if I double click in there I can convert my selection tool to a type tool and I am going to insert a break character now you can go up to type insert break character you can also right click and insert break character and insert a frame break not a page break a frame break that's going to force everything that comes past that into the next frame so there is my pay, my frame break put in we have this little problem here because it actually puts in a return that we don't need so if I go to my view um, oh actually sorry it's been type and it's going to be hidden characters there it is at the bottom hiding in plain sight okay there's my hidden characters I don't need that extra paragraph return up there uh, so I am simply going to delete that which is going to pull the text up then I want to put another break frame break in to follow the word appetite we want one right past there make sure that you get that after the exclamation point and again I'm going to put in another break character another frame break and again I need to delete that extra paragraph that's in there now working through this this is where I found there is a little bit of a problem putting in the font and the size that they are looking for doesn't quite fit so we are going to make a slight adjustment to the text box at the top instead of being a 0.625 for a height we are going to increase that slightly and I'm going to make it 0.7 inches the reason for that is because I found out that my type face would not fit in here the way they suggested doing it I'm going to select that type face now and I am going to change my text to a 60 point typeface which fits that way and we're going to change the text itself from the default which I mine is minion pro I'm going to look for the against the clock ATC onyx bold so there's my onyx bold this is working the way it's supposed to didn't work this way when I put it in with the smaller text line the typeface is actually slightly taller than it needed to be and it was forcing it down here now uh, we can take it back down to a uh, 
59 point if you'd like. Uh, it doesn't really make any difference at this point because I increased that. Uh, so if yours doesn't fit, you can take it down one point. You may end up having to change the size of the text box again to make it work. Uh, that was my you know, last choice to try. The other thing we want to do is to change the width. And this is not something you really want to do on a regular basis. We are changing the typeface from the way that it was built. There is a caution in here against doing this a lot, uh, especially on a font that is uh, a small typeface. You don't want to do this much because you can distort the letters to make them very difficult to read. On a headline, you can sometimes get away with this. It's just not my favorite thing to do. But we're doing this to an 80% to make it look like it's tall and stretched. So an 80% uh, width on there and change it to all caps. And we want to make sure that all of this text slides all the way through. So we are going to do a forced justification, justifying all lines, which is going to pull that all the way across. For my second text block, I'm going to select all of the text within. I'm going to change the text to a 20 point ATC. So let's go 18, 19, 20. I'm going to go with the ATC Onyx Normal. And in my third paragraph box, select all of that text. I'm changing that to a 24 point ATC Garnet Medium. I'm skipping over the following pages that you can read through yourself about paragraph formatting. I jumped ahead and did the justify all lines on the first headline there uh, off of page 126. I'd done that already. For the dot com at the bottom, we need to take that and align that to the right. We're going to pick up part of that first paragraph down through the master mystery machine paragraph. Select those and we're going to apply a space after that is an eighth of an inch, 0.125. So we're going to pick up the second through women of letters and we're going to decrease that again taking that back down to a sixteenth of an inch which pulls everything back together. We're also going to apply an indent on here because we want that listing to be pulled in. So we're going to increase the left indent to three tenths of an inch. You're going to have to type that in. It's not going to come up as a pop-up. Now that was wonderful, except we didn't get the master mystery machine. So we are going to put in an insertion point, delete that, and then put in an enter, which is going to pick up the formatting that we placed. However, we are also going to have to, again, increase our uh, paragraph after spacing back up to the eighth of an inch. By the way, I had gone in to type and turned off my hidden characters, and you don't need that on from this point on. We can now show the graphics, and with all of the text selected, you can do a Control A to select all, or you can click one, two, three, four, five times to select everything. We're going to change the color of the text to paper, and then pick up the headline and change the color of that to the metallic pantone color. We're also going to apply the pantone color to the summer concert series text. And save your file and we'll be back with stage three.